What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to link tags from our HMI application back to the PLC and essentially creating a link uh, through our network, which is going to pull the value values from the PLC in case of a display and send the values back to a PLC in case of a button or any kind of entry. I wanted to start this video uh, right at the very beginning. That way you can see all the steps throughout a new application. That way there's absolutely nothing that has been created in the in, in the past. That being said, the PLC uh, application is going to be there and it's just going to contain random tags. So nothing very uh, specific there. But we are going to start from a blank factory talk view studio application. So I'm going to hit on this new application button, which you've all probably have seen at this point. So this is going to be PLC tag application test. Uh, that's going to be on my panel view uh, plus 1000. So I'm going to select the appropriate, make sure to select the right one for you. And we're going to hit this create button. And within a few seconds, hopefully not too long of a period, we are going to get the blank application, which we are going to link back to the PLC. While we wait, we can look at the PLC. So this is something that I've used for a couple of examples in my tutorials. It just has a, cap, a couple of tags, a reels, uh, booleans, as well as integers. And uh, essentially, the kind of the two uh, things that you need to watch out for is if your tags are sc scoped within a controller, so a controller scope tag, or what's called a program scope tag, in which case it's going to reside in the uh, in the program right here. So this would be an example of a program scoped tag. And uh, of course, controller scope tags are going to reside if you click on this controller tags uh, button right here. Uh, that being said, let's see if the application is done creating. There is a little bit of lag because it is essentially creating a new layer on Factory Talk View Studio. So let's just uh, give it a couple of moments. Okay, so we seem to be back. It took a little bit more processing power than I had expected to create this application. That being said, the first thing that I want you to notice, and you might have seen me do this before, but essentially Factory Talk View Studio or just a Factory Talk View Terminal in general utilizes what's called Factory Talk Links instead of the normal RS links like you've used to on your computer. So we're going to double click this. We're going to see this communication setup pop up. We're going to double click that as well. And this is the first step to linking our HMI to the PLC. So once I double click this, uh, I should have a window which tells me that I need to create a new, um, a new setup essentially. Um, and that's going to link back to my PLC. So the PLC, what's important is that we see this IP address. And of course, we're not gonna get into, uh, there could be advanced networking, as long as your uh, IT guys are competent and are able to route your signal correctly, should be able to enter whatever IP uh, you might have here. But you need to know this 192.168.1.11. This actually popped up on top of the PLC stuff, but we are going to create a new configuration. I'm going to hit finish. And here we should have this new pop up in which we're going to create a device shortcut. Let's see here. So I'm going to wait for it to load. It should have some drivers which are pre populated, but I will need to add essentially the PLC inside of it. So here, if I go into this Ethernet, you will notice that I already have the PLC, but I just want to remove this. Uh, let's see here, we will delete this device because that would not be part of the uh, initial setup. So essentially, I'm going to right click, add new device. And I'm going to browse all the way down until I find the specific PLC that I am using in this particular application. So uh, all of these devices are viable. So let's go here, it's a 1769. 1769 L24ER QB1B right there. And uh, I'm going to expand this. I'm using major revision 30. So I'm going to select this 30. Hit on OK. 192.168.1.11 is the IP as you remember. I'm going to select that PLC. Uh, one thing to remember, and uh, this actually caused uh, a couple of issues in uh, firmware upgrades, is you should be selecting this top level for a compact logics in case you have an EN2TR or ENBT module, which is something that you have in a control logics platform, then you need to drill all the way down to the PLC. Like for example, in this case, as you can see, they're the same, uh, but just use this top level for the uh, compact logic. So I'm going to say this is going to be test PLC the matter the name does not matter too much you can give it whatever you feel like 
we are going to hit uh, we are going to reselect the PLC because it unselected. I'm going to hit apply, hit yes. If you are changing something, it will tell you old and new. And then we are going to copy from design to runtime. Uh, there is there are cases where in design you might have a local PLC and then in runtime it's a different PLC. So you have two separate uh, PLC systems, but essentially we are going to make them the same since we are using one single PLC on a single network. I'm going to hit on OK on this tab. And so now I should be able to go into my display and we're going to uh, just let's create a new display. So this is just going to be a blank display and let's start adding a button. So let's say momentary push button. So this is going to control one of the booleans on our PLC. And let's just verify that we have this. Uh, so this is going to be our test program. So we're going to add a new routine underscore zero three HMI. Uh, so this is going to be our test routine and let's create some kind of a tag system which we want to see here. Let's go into the routine. So here we're going to say HMI underscore bool. And this is going to be zero. And this is going to be on the PLC side. So PLC underscore bool is going to be zero. Okay, that looks good. Let's create a few. This is going to be new, uh, new Boolean and let's make uh, 32 of them. And so this is going to reside within the test program, which is actually a bit more uh, involved than just a controller scope tag. So new PLC bool one 32. And of course, we can, uh, we can let's put two of them here just to demonstrate the fact that we are going to uh, toggle those independently. So HMI bool zero, HMI bool one. Let's go back into our HMI application. And so here's our first button. Let's see here. And of course, um, you can give this better descriptive names once you are running uh, actual button. So here we can use a tag. And essentially, the tag is going to appear in this section. So what you'll notice right off at the beginning is that you don't see the tags that are on the PLC. So you have these uh, system tags, which are linked to your factory talk view, what you need to do is right click and we're going to refresh all folders. This should bring up bring up the tag which we've specified in our communications protocol. And this might take just a second. Let's see here if this um, it is taking uh, quite a bit of time to refresh. But here we have the test PLC, which appears immediately. And we are going to go into this online folder, the online folder is essentially where all the tags are going to reside. And uh, what's a bit not intuitive is that if you are at this top level, you will see the booleans, but you will see all the other stuff broken down in these uh, subfolders, essentially. And what we need to go into is we have this program test program, which is as you remember, the nested program. Uh, so it's not the controller scope tags, which are all of the above, uh, besides the ones labeled by program, but inside of the program, we will notice that there's going to be a uh, folder with an array, which is called HMI bool. And if we expand, if we actually if we click on that, so that's what's not intuitive. So if you have an array, which is within an array, then you'd have that as a subfolder again. But if we go in here, we can expand this just a little bit. And we will notice that our HMI bool zero is selected like such. And here you will see that the selected tag is pasted right there. But what you can do is just hit OK. And it should hopefully pre populate everything for us. There we go. So that's pasted in as we would expect. And I'm just going to shift this over a little bit to this side. And um, I believe I need to compile the program. So let's compile this program as well. And actually, one thing I didn't include is underscore, we need to jump to that subroutine in order to make sure that it works. So let's do that right now. Let's recompile the program. By the way, in case you haven't uh, noticed, this green bar will appear whenever the program is actually executing those rungs. Just a little uh, kind of tip there. What we can do at this point is we can control C control V this button for Boolean zero. Let's quickly change the name to a one. 
and connection is gonna go to one instead of that zero. Everything else remains the same. So you don't essentially don't need to rebrowse. You can essentially copy paste this if you're working with tags. The other uh, very, um, I guess, useful feature is that you can just copy this tag and put that in the next button and only re, uh, rename this HMI underscore bool one, for example, if you want to not have to browse through those tags again. But here what we can do is we can hit this play button. It's actually a little bit off the screen. So I'm going to hit play. And hopefully the display is actually able to load it's lagging just a little bit as you've seen in the past so it should be able to open that and uh, let's just give it one more uh, chance here in a second it should be able to test that display I will come back in just okay there we go looks like things are actually working so as you can see the HMI tags are being linked exactly as you would expect so the buttons are toggling the pieces on the HMI I mean sorry the HMI buttons are toggling the items on the PLC side so that's pretty much how you link a button back to the PLC and let's uh, let's stop this for a second and let's create some kind of a value so let's for example, let's do here, let's do a move instruction. So I've already had some real tags set up from a previous tutorial and we're going to do this, move this real from this zero to let's say this two, for example, and we're going to compile this. Uh, let's see here. So now we can create an object which is going to be a numeric display for example Nothing super fancy, but we are going to display both of those reels <clears throat> So connections are going to be the value and the, once again So once you browse back to this and you've added tags you need to essentially refresh all folders all over again You can refresh just the online folder, but it takes uh, just as much anyways so let's go here. System real is going to be in that same folder on the test program. And we're going to use zero. I'm going to, I'm going to pre copy essentially the one, actually, I'm just going to copy this, copy this into this two. So the connection is going to be real two. We're going to hit apply hit. Okay. And we're going to save this screen. It's going to be untitled, that's fine. And we're going to run this uh, display once again. So hopefully this time it doesn't take as long. Okay, so it's truncating the real value in terms of the dot 23. But if we give it a, let's see here, if we give it a different value, let's say 54, for example, then you will see that the HMI will immediately update both of those values. So essentially we have two way communication. So we are sending uh, a Boolean signal through the button press and we are retrieving a real value through the um, through this numeric display. So that's pretty much all you need to do in order to link tags from your HMI to your PLC system and vice versa. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.